Greetings Arrows fans, and welcome back to another edition of Arrows Update. I'm Matt Hartong, and this week Chris Thomas sits down with Tony Lastoria from Indians Prospect Insider, talking about players making their way up to Akron this year. Before we head over to Chris, a few episodes ago we talked about what promotions are returning to Canal Park. This week, Aria Mirabili lets us know what's new for 2012. If you've ever been to an Arrows game, you know that we bring the fans exciting and fun promotions. You've already seen what returning promotions we have for the 2012 season, but Calvin Funkhauser fills us in on what new promotions we'll be bringing you for this season. For 2012, we've got 20 fireworks shows this year. That's six more than last year, so I guess you could say we've got six new fireworks shows this season. Um, we're also bringing in uh, Monkey Rodeo, uh, Team Ghost Riders, uh, basically monkeys that ride around on dogs, herding sheep in the outfield. Different giveaway items this year, uh, we're doing a, a Matchbox style uh, race car, uh, we're going to be doing a, a jersey pillow, which exactly like it sounds, the pillow that looks like a baseball jersey. Um, so we've got some you know, new and exciting stuff this year, that's obviously just kind of the tip of the iceberg, but uh, hopefully we'll be releasing the promo schedule here soon. So This year, thanks to Dunkin' Donuts, the Arrows are bringing back nightly mascot races. Uh, well, if you remember the cream stick races uh, that we did out here for three seasons, I think, 08 to 2010, um, this is going to be very similar. Uh, basically, Dunkin' Donuts is on board as the sponsor. Um, they're supplying us with two mascots uh, to race each night, and then we'll have a third kind of stadium mascot kind of thing racing them each night. Uh, but basically, it'll be a topsy-turvy, you know, winner-take-all kind of race, and uh, each night's winner will be representing a section, and that section is going to be lucky enough to win prizes courtesy of Dunkin' Donuts. If you're interested in finding out more, check out our promotion schedule at AkronArrows.com. Thanks, Aria. This week on The Field Report, Tony Lastoria drops in to let us know who to look out for in Akron this season. Hello, welcome to The Field Report. I'm Chris Thomas, and I'm here this week with Indians Prospect Insiders, Tony Lastoria. Uh, we're going to be talking about players from A-Ball who you might see here in Akron this season. So, uh, Tony, if you had to pick one player from A-Ball that players should look out for here in Akron this year, who would it be? A lot of players are going to be returning to Akron this year because uh, of the depth that you need to have in upper levels. But uh, one guy who potentially could start the season here this year, who's a higher, who's a high-end prospect, who... Um, or if he does not start season here, he will spend a majority of the season here. Is Tyler Hall? He's an outfielder, uh, played with the Carolina League, uh, Kansas City Indians last year. Um, didn't really impress the batting average. You know, people may see the batting average and the RBIs and the power numbers. You know, the, the home runs. Those are for those. Those are the three things people always look at. They're not going to be very impressive. Mm -hmm. That's not really his game. The power. He's a blow. Average, he's a blow up, blow average power hitter. But um, his game is getting on base. He was first in the league in walks last year in the Carolina League. He was second in on base percentage, uh, third in stolen bases. So that's kind of his thing to to get on base, draw you know uh, you know w you know work counts, make pitchers pile up pitches, that kind of thing. He's not afraid for work from behind from an account. He'll he'll take pitches. He's a very he's a very aggressive hitter. Um, the whole hitting component with him is something he's still working on. When he came out of the draft, it was. It was kind of something that they were kind of working on him a little bit. Made some strides. Uh, hopefully that those those things he did last year carry over to this year. Now he can kind of put it all together as a hitter this year. Because uh, A is really kind of that separator level for a lot of guys, especially college players. Um, very intense guy. Um, you know, wound tight. Uh, came in the organization. Uh, he's, he's a guy that uh, when he was in college, he literally almost got thrown out of every game he was in. He argues strikes, argues out calls. He's always safe. He's that kind of a guy. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to have. You want that kind of inten intense competitor. It could also be a bad thing. In college, when you play three, four games a week, you can kind of deal with that. But when you're playing every day, you know, for over the course of five, six months, 140 games, you can't be like that. You got to be more low key and you got to be able to, you know, handle that. So that's something he's kind of working on. In the outfield, he's, he's, he's probably an average defender. Uh, he can handle all three positions well. Solid arm. Probably profiles as a, as a fourth outfielder. Could be a third uh, outfielder, you know, an everyday kind of guy if he uh, turns into a guy that can hit the ball more consistency, uh, consistently. And um, we'll see how that goes down the line. But definitely a guy that uh, Arrows fans are going to enjoy at some point this season for a majority of the year uh, leading off games for them. What about pitching? Uh, last year, the trades of Alex White and Drew Pomeranz left a hole in talent uh, on the pitching side in the Indians organization, and some prospects like Kelvin De La Cruz uh, just didn't pan out like we thought. 
who might be some arms that we could look forward to seeing develop here in Double A this season? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of guys will be returning this year. A lot of depth. You got Matt Packer, T.J. McFarland probably will probably be back in rotation. Um, you know, some other guys may be in the mix there here last year. One guy that potentially will be here to start the season, or will pitch a majority of the season here, will be uh, Clayton Cook. He's a right-handed pitcher. Um, Indians drafted him in 2008 out of high school, so he's really kind of advanced pretty quickly. He's a young pitcher. Um, he kind of he kind of is in the mold of a Jemar Gomez. Uh, that's kind of the guy he's comp to. You know, I know Gomez has not really impressed a lot, but he actually he's still a young pitcher. He's growing into, into the big league game, and he could be a solid middle rotation back end starter in the big leagues. He's got a low 90s fastball. I actually saw a little bit of a velocity increase last year. He uh, actually hit 96 a couple times. That's not where he lives. He lives more in 91, 93, but he has the potential where he's still growing and maturing. He, he has two good uh, um, developing secondary pitches, his curveball and his changeup. Curveball uses it as an out, as an out pitch. Flashes plus potential. Probably will become a plus pitch at some point. Cur- uh, changeup also flashes plus, but it's probably be an average pitch down the road. So he's got three good pitch. He's got a very good three pitch mix. He's a bulldog on the mound. You know, he, he attacks the zone. You know, all the things you want out of a starting pitching prospect. The key with him going forward is just that consistency with his performance. He um he has potentially he, he has the potential to uh, blow up uh, in a couple of games. Last year, uh, he made twenty five starts and twenty one of those twenty five he gave four runs or less. Seventeen of those twenty five he gave two runs or less. So he mm-hmm. he, he is usually very good. Four of those outings, he got bombed pretty good. So he has to work on, from start one to 30 over the course of a full season, he has to work on that, that consistency. Um, and then another guy to look out for is uh, in the bullpen will be Preston Gilman. Guy that's kind of underrated. Um, guys, he doesn't really have, you know, big stuff, you know, low 90s fastball. Saw a little bit of a velocity creep last year. Um, the thing with him, he has, is he has a very unique straight over the top throwing motion. You know, he, where when he releases the ball, when you can, when you add in the height of the mound and his arm, his, his wingspan, he's releasing the ball eight feet from the top, you know, eight feet from the ground. And so by the time it gets to the, you know, the catcher's mitt, it's two or three feet above the ground. So it's got some good downward angle, creates a lot of fits for hitters, a lot of deception. So he doesn't really have a very good plus offering. You know, his splitter's pretty good. His slider's pretty good. But um, it's really that that deception he creates. That's why he's had a lot of success in lower in the lower levels. He's an older pitcher, uh, kind of a guy like Corey Burns last year, kind of underrated coming in. weren't well, People weren't sure what he was going to do at Double A. He had a great year. Corey Burns had a great year last year. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, Gilma does the same thing. We'll see. He's not, but he's kind of like in that secondary level as far as relief pitching prospects go. But he's a guy that can dominate late in games. It's going to be a lot of fun for Aeros fans to watch, and you know people are going to really. You know, take notice of that, that unique straight over the top Kevin Ape, your kind of uh, delivery. Now, uh, power has been something that's been lacking in the Indians organization for a few years. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Jesus Aguilar, he played in Kinston last year. Uh, he's 6'3", 241 pounds. He plays first base. He certainly sounds like a power hitter. Uh, might we see him this year in Akron? And is he the tribe's power answer down the line? Definitely. I mean, he um, he's got that. He's definitely got the raw power. I mean, the, the, there's no doubt with the tool um, that is his best tool. Uh, he's got the potential to hit 30, 30 home runs in the big league someday. Um, the, the big thing with him is the plate discipline. I mean, he's never going to be. A, he's a big guy. He's never going to be a good runner. He doesn't have. You know, his, his arm is okay. So really, it comes down to power hitting and the defense. And uh, the power is there. There's no doubt about that. Now it's going to come down to the defense and the, and the hitting. As a defender, the Indians, uh, he, he's a below average defender right now, but he's still growing into the, into the position. He, um, he came in, he was signed as a third baseman. He played first base outfielder his first year or whatever. Really started honing in at first base the last three years. So he's still learning the position, learning how to, you know, pre-pitch setup, positioning on cutoffs, you know, left and right movement, you know, on, on ground balls, that kind of stuff. So he's a below average defender now, but the Indians really believe he could become an average defender, which, you have a 30 home run guy, you can live with an average defender at, you know, at first base. But ultimately what's going to determine his fate is the, is the hitting tool. And, you know, the, you know, plate discipline, he, he really dominated low A last year. Uh, when he left, uh, um, um, the Midwest League last year, he played only 95 games. He finished, uh, seventh in the league in home runs with just 95 games. He was second in the league in home runs per at bat, um, second league in, in OPS. So he definitely had a great year, breakout season in low A. The, uh, the key with him, though, is just 
is limiting those strikeouts, you know, mm-hmm. hitting better pitches. You know, you know, with his setup at the plate, he has a tendency to get um, eaten up a little bit inside on fastballs. As he goes up the ladder, you know, it's a high A, double A, and triple A. Those pitchers get better. They know how to work you inside. He also has a tendency to he can't lay off those low and away breaking balls. So those are two big keys for him. And uh, it's really going to, this year is going to determine what happens to him as a prospect. You know, we'll, we'll see if he's for real. He had a great showing in the Arizona Fall League uh, and then also Winter Ball in Venezuela where he um, he showed the power and showed some improved plate discipline. You don't really take a lot out of the numbers from, from the Fall and Winter Leagues with players, but when you see the improved plate discipline, plate discipline that's something that uh, is encouraging going forward. So he may not start the season in Akron um, because there's, there's, a, there's a backlog of first baseman and AAA. And you may see a guy like Bo Mills could even start here this year. Who knows? So, But at some point, he's going to probably be here by midseason and is definitely one of the, the best hitting prospects in the Indian system to watch going forward. Thanks, Tony. And remember, you guys can go to Tony's website, Indians Prospect Insider, to learn about these and other players throughout the Indians organization. You can also check out his book, the 2012 Cleveland Indians Prospect Insider, the top 100 prospects and more. Next week, we'll be talking about the Indians 2011 draft picks. Thanks, guys. Next week, we'll be talking about the Indians 2011 draft picks, and we'll introduce you to some new food items you'll be able to get in the park this summer. If you can't wait until the next Arrows update to find out, keep up with us online at AkronArrows.com and find us on Facebook and Twitter to get special promo codes for the tickets that go on sale online March 10th. We'll see you next time.